everyone, my name is Amanda Harris. Um, I graduated from Washington University in St. Louis last May and I studied medical anthropology. And then I also studied abroad in Eureka um, my junior year and did intercultural health as my program. So that's the context for this. My project is called the Changing Maternal Healthcare Landscape and the Perspective of the Female Aymara. And so for a little bit of background on the Chilean maternal health care system, there have been a lot of changes in the past century, and specifically in the past 50 years. Um, and we've seen a drop in maternal morbidity, um, and as well as infant mortality. So we've seen some great successes in the system. Two systems or policies I want to point out uh, is the sanitary code was updated and now bans home births. And so this has changed the role of the Aymara birth attendant drastically. And so in Arica, where I'll be based, now the birth attendants work within the hospital setting in Arica and travel there um, and then do pre and postnatal care within their, within their communities. And then the system Chile Crece Contigo, which is the national maternal health care system here, was implemented in 2007. And it has the goals to protect a company and assist all children and their families. And a little bit more context, um, the Aymara have a different cosmovision about birth. Um, there's different practices, so different herbs are used, um, pain management techniques differ, um, the actual process of the birth can differ. Um, so you see here she's using massage as a technique to um, help with the birth. Uh, we also see continued demand for these intercultural or cultural resources. So within the surrounding towns, you have intercultural health clinics uh, where they use a combination of occidental medicine and indigenous medicine. And like I said, the partera works within, or the birth attendant works within the Arican main hospital to assist with the births. Additionally, the medicalization of birth uh, fits within the context of Chilenization or Chilenización, which describes the promotion of Chilean ideals over indigenous groups and other ideals. And this term comes from the process describing what happened in the north. So after the War of the Pacific, when Chile incorporated more territory from Peru, including Arica, um, this process of Chilenization affected the indigenous groups, including the Aymara. So that's an interesting context to approach this research from. So my specific objective is to analyze the Chilean maternal health care system and really analyze it from the perspective of Aymara women. So what's working for them, what's not working for them, um, and then also describe the changes that have happened in the system uh, because of these new policies and laws and systems. And so my three questions a little hard to see, but um, the first is how has the implementation of Chile Cresa Contigo changed the Aymara's maternal health care system, including the role of the birth attendant? And secondly, what are the needs, cultural and otherwise, of Aymara women in regards to birth and pre and postnatal care? And then the third is asking, are these needs being met by the current system? And if not, what changes could be made to better support these women. So I will be based in Arica, um, very, very north of the country, uh, right next to Peru. It's about a 20 minute drive. Um, and in this area and surrounding region, it's about a third Aymara. And so I'll also be doing some work in Putre and surrounding towns. And my primary methodology will be qualitative interviews. So I hope to interview matronas and medical professionals within the hospital in Arica um, and surrounding towns. And then I also want to conduct semi-structured interviews and focus groups with Aymara women and follow them long term throughout their pregnancy um, or after birth and see how their, um, how their care is influenced with Chile Crece Contigo and what needs they have. So I'm excited it's a nine month process because that means I can follow some women throughout the entire pregnancy. So timing is good. 
Um, these are my partners. They're, they look friendlier in person. <laughs> <laughs> but the, um, the first picture is of Dr. Luis Galdamas Rosas, and he's with the Universidad de Tarapaca in Arica, and he's with um, the Department of History and Geography. And I asked him to be my advisor instead of someone from the anthropology department because I really wanted that local context um, to understand how geography and history has influenced the healthcare system. And then I'll also be working with Senora Roxana Galvez, and she is with the healthcare system, specifically with the reproductive healthcare unit and the regional hospital in Eureka. So I'm hopeful that she'll provide me with some contacts and um, of matronas and of women that I can speak to. So my expectations broadly are to better understand the influence of culture um, on maternal health. And um, I'm hopeful that through the interviews I can, I can gain a more nuanced understanding of that. And then secondly, I hope to highlight the complexities of designing a national <coughs> healthcare system, specifically a national maternal healthcare system, um, both at a national and local level. So how does a national system designed in Santiago impact local communities and local realities, specifically of indigenous groups? And then as far as impact, I hope to show the importance of continued critical analysis of systems that impact culturally significant experiences such as birth. Um, so how does this impact people's lives, not just health outcomes? And then secondly, I hope to learn from Chile and to help other people learn from Chile from both its strengths and weaknesses and its incorporation of often marginalized communities um, through the design of its healthcare system. And on a personal and professional note, um, I'm from St. or I'm from Atlanta, but I've lived in St. Louis for the past five years, and that community has an infant mortality rate about three times the national average. So I'm hopeful that some of the knowledge I gain will or can be applied to St. Louis, and um, looking at it through a cultural lens will help me apply the pertinent components of this program to my own community. So that's it from me. Any questions? What inspired you to follow the Aymara women particularly? Because I know yeah. there are a lot of other indigenous groups like the Mapuche. So are you yeah. going to be looking at uh, the differences between or really mainly focusing on Aymara perspective? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I actually did a pilot study with the Mapuche um, with my study abroad program. And it was great and I learned a lot. But I wanted to look at the Aymara perspective because they have the parterra in the hospital that actually assists with the births. So I was curious to see how they were able to integrate the health systems at that level um, and what were the factors in that decision making to make that happen. But there's a chance I'll be exploring or going back to my old research to make comparisons depending on what I find. I have a question out of curiosity. Yeah. I was wondering if you could maybe just highlight a little bit what is the difference between a partera and a matrona? Yeah. So when I use the word partera, that is the is an Aymara or another indigenous um, birth attendant. Sometimes you hear them referred to as traditional birth attendants, but in the anthropology community, some people have um, think that has a stigma. So I just call them parteras because that's what people call them here. Um, and then a matrona works within the Chilean healthcare system to assist with the births or to assist with pre and postnatal care. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that the Aymara have a different cosmovision about birth. Can you describe it? Yeah, I really can't at this point. Oh. Um, just because from what I've read, it's been mixed and I need to learn a lot more about it to actually describe it. Um, I'm more familiar with the Mapuche cosmovision regarding birth, actually. So that's something I'm really excited to learn more about. Could you define cosmovision? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's good. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what it is at all. Yeah, so, so it's, it's kind of the way of seeing the world and um, looking at um, maybe everyday experiences with a greater understanding of higher powers or of cultural components or 
yeah, just like a, a more broad outlook on life or a vision on life. I don't know if you're aware, but there was a Fulbright scholar here last year. I don't know if you know Mason, but she was from the Emory School of Nursing, and she did a whole study on midwifery oh. in Chile. So it might be, yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be great. Worth making the connection with her to see what she what she found and who she yes. worked with. She was in, I think she was in Santiago. But that'd be great to connect to her. Thanks. And I lived in Atlanta. Oh, so nice. <laughs> Question. You mentioned the discrepancy between the national uh, infant mortality rate in St. Louis. Um, is there also a discrepancy here between the Aymara population and the... Yeah, the research I found mostly talks about the Mapuche discrepancy, um, and they have higher rates of infant mortality. And I haven't found specific numbers on the Aymara infant mortality, and I don't know if they're out there, and I just haven't found it yet. Um, but I imagine would probably apply to the Aymara as well. Yeah. Um, a comment in relation to your uh, your comments about the Cosmovision, yeah. um, Aymara Cosmovision. I, I'd be really curious to to hear um, how, I guess, how those patronas, mm -hmm. how what was the word? Oh, parteras. Parteras um, are making sense of and integrating technology into that. Cosmovision as they become more and more um, <clears throat> involved with Occidental Yeah, yeah, that's a great comment. I'm curious about that too. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you.